Okay, so we are now recording. So just keep that in mind. If you don't want to have your camera on, no worries. Um, so today's intention, I'm just going to go over quickly. Um, so this pamphlet or this presentation on the pamphlet is going to provide a comprehensive overview of the resources that graduate students with children of their own can use to make their time in graduate school a little bit easier. Um, this is by no means all of the information that's out there. It's just um, what has been found, the best of what's been found in the College Park area and places nearby. Okay, and it's very, very important to keep in mind that what I'm gonna go through in this presentation is not all of the information that is on the pamphlet. So the pamphlet will be listed and linked at the end of the presentation. and will also be sent out in an email after the presentation. So uh, definitely take a look at that. It has so much more, so many more resources than what I'm gonna give you today. What I'm gonna give you today though, is just the, the big ones that I think are the most important of what I found. Okay, so just a quick overview of what we're gonna talk about. Also, if you guys have any questions at any time, just type them in the chat, raise your hand, anything like that. I can tend to talk a little bit fast. So <laughs> if I'm going too fast, please tell me, I'll slow down. Um, okay, yeah, so just a quick overview. We're gonna go over balancing school and family life, uh, different childcare options that are available both on and off campus. We're gonna talk about disability services such as health and assessment financial issues, uh, some important UMD policies that everybody should be aware of as student parents, and then just what's next after that. So again, some common student parent questions that I often see and that have been really prominent in the graduate school community, I feel, are, um, you know, how do I balance school and work in the right capacity? How do I know when to put my work away and to pay attention to my family and that kind of thing? Um, I need childcare, but I don't know where to get it or how expensive it is. Um, those are often common questions and that falls into financial issues, which we are going to touch on a lot today. Um, I think my child might have disabilities. They don't know where to go for help or assessment. I'm going to provide a lot of resources for that. And um, some people don't know all the UMD policies that are um, available for graduate students with children. So I think it's really important that we go over those as well, which we will. All right, so first we're gonna talk about balancing school and family life. So there's a bunch of different resources on campus. First, I'm gonna talk about just a couple of different online groups that you can join, especially right now because of COVID. It's really important that we have all of these resources, even if we can't be together physically. The first one that I wanna talk about is the UMD Parents Google group. So these are all private groups, by the way, so you have to be admitted into them but it's pretty easy to get admitted into them. You just have to request access. Um, so it's a private Google group for UMD students, faculty and staff who are parents and caregivers. It's basically just a way for UMD parents to connect, to find different ways on how they're dealing with school and dealing with their children and their families at the same time. And it's a really good resource to get to know other people that, have, um, that are in school and also have children. There's also Route One Moms, which I think was a really good uh, resource that I found. It's a private Facebook group um, that's created for parents in the College Park area to connect, um, receive, or give advice, and to vent. And I think vent is a very important word to talk about here because sometimes it is really challenging to deal with raising a family and going to graduate school. So venting is great. It relieves all of your stress and I really enjoy it. <laughs> and I think that this group is a great way to get that, to get that out. And lastly, um, I wanna talk about UMD babysitters and local parents of littles. So this is just a Facebook group that provides um, connections to local babysitters um, and connecting them with parents. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to find a good quality babysitter around the area that's also affordable. And if somebody has already found that for you, then you know it's easier to use it if somebody has already used them and has a positive recommendation about them. Okay, so these are other resources on campus. They're not online groups. They're just other resources available to student parents. So the first one is um, the Managing Family and Stress Resource created by the UMD Department of Family Science. 
and it's related to how to manage stress with your family through COVID. So this might be dwindling down a little bit, but it's still very prominent right now. And it's just a one page, like um, kind of a pamphlet, I would say, um, of how to kind of deal with that stress in a positive way and help your children through it as well. There's also the Center for Healthy Families. It's a UMD sponsored teletherapy service. Right now it's teletherapy, but maybe one day it will be regular therapy again. <laughs> um, and their sessions range from 15 to $70, depending on family income. So the lower your family income, the lower your rate's gonna be. And that is the case for a lot of these places that I found. So definitely keep that in mind. A lot of places do, do rates based on family income, which I love, I absolutely love. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is the family rooms in the McKelvin Library. So on the third floor of McKelvin, there is a uh, family room, which you can rent out for the day or for a couple hours or however long you need. And basically it has um, kids furniture, activities for your children, such as like coloring books, um, Jenga, different activities that kids love to do. Um, and it's a way to keep them occupied while you're also getting your work done and not just, you know, leaving them without anything to do. So yeah, I really enjoyed that resource, finding that resource as well. Okay, so just a quick Zoom poll that I wanna do um, and get your guys' opinion on. Have you ever used any of these resources or other resources that you have found on campus? Give a couple more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll in like two seconds. So if you haven't responded, please do respond. If you can respond. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so most people have not um, used these resources. Okay, that is good to know. Um, for those who have, is anybody willing to share like what resource they used and how it helped or did not help them in a certain way? And if you wanna raise your hand, go ahead. Some of you said yes. So what resource did you use? Well, I'd be willing yeah. to chime in a little bit. So I um, I had my first child last spring and um, right before um, I had him, I found out about the UMD parents Google group, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a listserv, an email listserv of sorts. And um, it was really helpful to me because I started getting emails from people, at, you know, that had either, you know, kids resources um, for, you know, kids to go explore or summer camps. They also talked about, um, you know, child care needs, um, also people would post like if they were getting rid of kids clothing or other things on the um, listserv. And so it just was a really kind of all around good resource and, and a way for me to feel a little bit more at ease that I wasn't like alone in um, venturing on this journey. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I'm actually, I think the Facebook group that you're talking about, I'm actually gonna touch on a little bit later. So you jump the gun, but it's okay. <laughs> Well, because it was it was the Facebook group, but then also the Google group. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, both ones. Yeah. All of the resources that are online are just so good. And everybody there is like so welcoming. And I love to hear that you had a great experience with that. That's awesome. Um, anybody else want to chime in or anything else? Okay, that's okay, we'll move on. <laughs> All right. 
So in terms of uh, work family balance resources off of campus, because there are a ton of resources off of campus, um, the first one that I found was Dr. Amber Thornton. She um, creates strategies, programs, and she has a podcast for um, working moms that need help balancing the work, family, wellness um, aspect of working and raising a family at the same time. And she has some great resources on her website. Again, everything is linked on the pamphlet. So if you want any of her links, they're all on there. <laughs> um, the next one I want to talk about is Lotus Counseling. So there's obviously a lot of counseling centers out there that provide great resources for everybody, but I picked this one especially because they specialize in um, student mental health, such as um, anxiety, depression, stress, and trauma, like more common things that students might go through versus somebody else. So um, that I thought was really important. And because they specialize in it, it's just a great resource to use as students. And then the last one is the Maryland Family Network. Um, it helps parents get a degree with high quality and affordable childcare. So technically this is a childcare resource as well, but I did wanna put it on here as a work family balance resource because it really does emphasize the fact that it is possible to do graduate school and raise a family at the same time. And there's so many resources out there to help you with that. Okay, so yeah, other Facebook groups that I found. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is Students with Kids, which is a UMD organization. Um, basically their goals are to build a community of student parents and parents-to-be with their partners. They host family-friendly events, they provide mutual assistance and information about available resources. And they advocate within the university to have more um, resources that support students with children. So I really love that advocating part of it. I think it's great. And I think if you are somebody who loves to advocate for people that have children in graduate school or in undergraduate school even, like it's, it's a great resource for that. The next one is Grad Turp Mental Health. Um, this is just a um, Facebook page that keeps you all up to date on all of the mental health um, seminars and workshops that are happening on campus, especially for graduate students. And then the last one is not technically mental health related or child related, but the UMD Graduate School Facebook page is obviously something that everybody should be subscribed to. It does give um, mental health updates as well as other programs for graduate students only. And any um, program or any activity that you're doing as a graduate student that's outside of work and outside of raising your family is going to be good for your mental health. It's going to help you connect with other people and it's going to help you relax and just have a, a good amount of fun for a little bit. So I think that that is definitely a good resource for everybody. Okay, so I just want to go through some general tips on um, how to um, manage both graduate school and your family. Um, I think the first and most important thing is to not only create a strong social and support network outside of graduate school, but also create one in graduate school. So the first two points kind of go together. Um, creating that social um, and that support network outside of graduate school obviously is great with your partner, with your family, with your outside friends. It's all fantastic and having that support is amazing. But at the same time, it's really important to make those connections with other graduate students that have children. And I think especially right now in COVID, it's really, really hard for people to do that and make those connections, especially because sometimes we don't even see each other's faces um, when we're online. So I think just trying to reach out to people, joining these Facebook groups, creating more connections with people that are going through the same thing that you're going through is going to just open a world of opportunity for you and how to manage both graduate school and your family. The next thing I wanna talk about is keeping work life and home life separate. So one really great way to do this because I know a lot of people struggle with this but they want to do better at it is on your way home from work, think about your work day. So think about what you did right, think about what you did wrong and gradually move your thoughts from your work day to your family. So by the time you get home, you are completely family focused. You don't even worry about your work day. Tomorrow's a new day. It's all about your family. 
And then the last thing is to speak openly with your partner, obviously about your concerns, but also about when you're feeling happy or when you're feeling positive. So it's important, communication is key. I know that's like the most cliche thing in the entire book, but <laughs> it really is. It's really important to talk to your partner when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling stressed, but also when you feel like you have things under control too. Just keeping them in the loop is basically the whole thing. <laughs> okay, and then general tips specifically for children with disabilities. Um, it can be a little bit more difficult to raise a child with disabilities sometimes, but these children are just the most amazing people in the entire world. And I, I love them. I love working with all children. <laughs> so, you know, children are great. Um, but yeah, one of the big things is books and podcasts. So just finding resources out there that are going to help you improve your parenting and improve your child's life. So um, there are many books out there that just really um, focus on first person accounts of how um, somebody raised their child that has a specific disability. So all of these books that I've listed here, such as Welcome to Holland, The Out of Sync Child, Far From the Tree, and Shut Up About Your Perfect Kid, they're all ways, or they're all different ways that um, people have raised their children through different um, issues that their child might have. Um, for one of them, the out of sync child is really good for um, children that have sensory issues. So I honestly had sensory issues when I was a child. I feel like it's much more common than we all think it is. And um, it really divides um, the two types of sensory issues that you can have, either seekers or avoiders and how to um, manage that and how to help your child through that and just different ways to parent um, for your child, basically. And then if books aren't your thing, there's also podcasts, obviously. Um, you can listen to them in the car, you can listen to them whenever. Um, there's the Mala Bear podcast, LLMH, Special Needs podcast, Accepting the Unacceptable. Again, these are all just different ways to raise your child. Some of them um, go through first-person accounts of a specific person's journey through raising their child. And it just provides a lot more insight on how people are raising their children and if you want to adopt any of these um, strategies for yourself. Again, Facebook groups are a big thing. Um, there are many different groups out there for many different types of support. So um, there is a Facebook group for parents of children with learning disabilities, specifically learning disabilities. There's also many Facebook groups out there about parents of children with ASD or ADHD or OCD. There's every single type of Facebook group out there that you could possibly think of. You just gotta look for it, honestly. Um, and then the last thing I would say is don't freak out. It's you know, it's totally normal and all children are fantastic. And, you know, just kind of like seek the support when you need. And this goes for everybody, honestly, not just for raising a child with disabilities, but just seeking support when you need that support, finding that extra, um, that extra help when you need it, calling your partner, calling your family, um, going to therapy even. Like these are all really, really important things that people sometimes forget about because they're in the midst of doing their graduate school or raising their children or doing both at the same time. So it's really important to just keep in mind your own mental health at the same time as your child and your partners and everybody else's. And the last thing I would say is to really understand the ins and outs of your child's disorder really do the research. If you actually get them to have, a, have an assessment and they get um, diagnosed for real, it's important to really do the research on that disorder, understand what's happening in your child's brain, understanding um, how you can help them and that type of thing. So we had some questions in the chat. Okay. Um, Sorry, so, it's hard for me to see. It's, it's okay. It's okay. That's, that's, that's why I, I'm here. I got, I got you. Don't worry about it. Thank you. <laughs> so some of the questions, it's, it's really a good question. Separating work and home life can be difficult, especially for those working from home. Any recommendations for tackling this? And there were a lot of echoes of like, this is a great question because during COVID, especially we're working from home, like how do you keep it separate when we work, we live, we do school, we do everything at home? Right. Um, if anyone has any suggestions from the group, you know, please be, feel free to share. Um, I feel like with most of the parents that I know who have children and 
you know, they're working from home and doing at home schooling. It's been it's been interesting. Um, I've tried to really be clear with people that I meet with via Zoom. If your little ones are on camera, that is okay. That yeah. is welcome. I've had people try to like hide their kids. You can pick them up. They can walk around. I have clients and <laughs> I do therapy part time. I've had clients that I've talked to their kids during sessions because they want to talk to mommy. They're like, mommy, let's drink, let's do some. Like, I'm like, how are you? And you can engage with them. But other suggestions especially is maybe having a designated space for your work, having a designated space for school or you know, depending on your space and the lay of your land, but maybe having time for space dedicated to that. And essentially, you know, at the end of your day or the end of the school day, maybe engaging something that feels fun for you both. Um, this could be reading together, something that could be grounding, or even just doing something fun, like you're finished today, your kids finish, let's have a dance off. Let's like, let's do something fun for the day. Um, but just something in terms of managing your time in that space. But if there's anyone in the group that has any suggestions that they want to share with the group, please do so. I mean, personally, from what I've seen in other people, um, it is really helpful to have a designated workspace that's separate from your child's room, I would say, like not having them cooped up in their room trying to do their work, because then they're going to want to leave their room more often, they're going to want to come talk to you, they're not going to want to just stay in that room all day. So definitely changing up the location is great. Um, and then also having a designated area where you can work. So you can put your computer down at the end of the day or your laptop or whatever, your desktop, and leave that area and not worry about it. Um, just try to keep everything a little bit more separated so that it's easier for you to transition from one place to another. And the only thing I would probably add is just give yourself grace. Um, yeah. When I saw my friend FaceTimes me with her daughter in the morning at 7 a.m. and her daughter is screaming, which is fine, but she's always like, oh, it's so messy in here. That is okay. It's not going to be perfect right now. There may be toys afoot. The playpen may be open. It may not be perfect, but give yourself some grace. I think that there is pressure that we all should be performing the way we were prior to the pandemic. And the reality is that we're in a pandemic. Some days we are going to show up and it's going to be in a hoodie. And it's okay to be transparent in that moment and say, you're getting the best version that I have of myself today. And my kid is having a moment, so we're going to have a moment, but I just want to let you know that. And that, that feels good and that feels helpful. 100%. I totally agree. Does anybody else have anything to add? I will say um, through the program, so I'm in the Smith School of Business. I'm a first year student. And sometimes I just am so overwhelmed with schoolwork. I can't separate it. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes I have to be okay with that. And that's when I actually open the door and I invite my daughter to come do work with me. Yeah. And whether if it's iPad games or, you know, I just have to be okay with like screen time or whatever. I'm going to, whatever's going to let her do work with me, but she really loves to be involved. Like if I'm stressed and I really, I just really want to focus on it. Um, I think instead of trying to distract her elsewhere, I just bring her into the office with me. And she, I mean, it's become a thing where she wants, sometimes she'll ask to like, can we just go work? <laughs> I'm like, sure, of course. I know you're just asking for iPad time, but <laughs> it benefits us both. So oh, I love that. That is amazing. And I love that you're able to do that and have that connection with your child while you're still working. That's amazing. Um, I see Catherine's hand is raised. Yes, so um, just to kind of piggyback off of that comment, I am also in um, Robert Smith School of Business uh, first semester for me, and um, I kind of stumbled across this great method. Um, sometimes when my daughter wants to get picked up, she's seven months old, by the way, so she just wants to hit something and she'll be fine. She kind of wants to be under my wing. So um, I've had like extra things to, so she wants to do what I'm doing because her colorful toys somehow un are not interesting her because <laughs> she wants to do what I'm doing. So um, I have an extra keyboard um, that I have for like my desktop that, that I, when I'm on my laptop, I just, you know, it's unplugged keyboard. She can hit the keyboard all day, nothing's happening. Um, another thing is, um, you know, if she wants to sit on my lap for a longer period of time, I'll have two screens set up where, um, 
one screen will have, you know, Netflix going and the other screen I'm actually looking at, you know, my schoolwork. And uh, I think there was one more trick that I had um, that was really working for me. I just can't think of it at the, mo at the moment. But, um, yeah, I, I just thought I'd share those two things that, I don't know, may or may not help. Oh, the last thing that I couldn't think of, um, I recently came across, so if you're mobile, um, you're out and about, and you need, you absolutely need two screens, and um, you're like, you have an iPad, I, I recently learned there, there, there's this app out there called, uh, so it's for 10, it's 10 bucks, a 10 bucks one time purchase, you can turn your Apple charger into and like an HDMI cord of some, some sort. And um, so while you're charging your iPad, if you plug it into your laptop, it also becomes a second monitor. So that that really helps. Like you download do it to play on your iPad and download do it to play on your uh, actual computer or laptop. And plugging in the charger cord will feature it into a second monitor. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you mind like when you're not driving, obviously, but like writing that um, that um, app in the in the chat whenever you're not driving? Sure. Yeah. No. Honestly, I wasn't driving for long, and I'm pulling up to a parking spot where my destination is, so it's perfect timing. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Please do not crash. <laughs> um, yeah, but I love all of those uh, techniques that you have. I think something really important to take away from that is every parent is going to be different in the way that they can adopt to their situation. Like every parent, some people have two kids, some people have three kids, some people have one child. Every child is at a different age and they need different things. Like it's really like what, what I took away from that, not only that you're very creative, by the way. Um, but also that there's so many different ways to keep your children engaged while you're doing your work. And I think that that's awesome. Um, and I guess that kind of like tackles this question that I was gonna ask. Um, <laughs> um, basically, are there any strategies that have worked for you? Um, but we can go to the second question. Um, what's some good advice that you've received from other grad students if you've received any? Or just like from other people in general, it doesn't have to be a grad student. But. I guess I've gotten a little bit of good advice. Um, it, just in hearing other people's stories, all of my fellow Smith students who are in their first year in the first year, we all tried to meet in person and we all tried to like each of us show that we were going to participate and we were going to pull our own weight and we were going to be productive members of our groups. And then in the second year, we're all like, OK, you're the accounting person, so we're really going to rely on Jane for accounting. And, you know, when we get when we get to the other classes and the more life science skills, like we're really going to rely on someone's just participating where you can, like playing to your strengths and not trying to not trying to over show up where like, if accounting isn't your thing, like just sit back and let the accounting people handle it and just show up where you can like offer to edit. Don't do the, the heavy lifting if that's not your thing. Yeah, I think that's really something to be said about any group project that you're doing. Like, you know, let the people that are really good at this take the lead and then you kind of take the back seat, but still are learning in the process and not overwhelming yourself with the um, the burden of trying to figure it out really fast because you're not good at it. I, I think that that's really important and also probably gives you more time to spend with your kids at the same time. Um, okay, that's awesome. Does anybody else have any really good advice or you guys ready to move on? Well, this, this yeah. wasn't advice necessarily from like another grad student, but it was advice that I got from my mentor yeah, totally. um, or my, my advisor for my PhD. Um, and so I, um, I'm in that transitioning phase where I'm trying to do my comp exams and transition from coursework into dissertation mode. And um, I was doing all of this work to get to that point last semester 
And I finally kind of got to this moment where like everything was just too much. And I was so anxious and I was so overwhelmed and I just couldn't like handle the home, family, work, school. Like it just was a, a ton. <laughs> and um, I thankfully I have a really great mentor who um, I was an advisor who I was able to be honest to um, about how I was feeling. Um, and she gave me some of the best advice to be, to give myself a little grace and a little bit of space. And so I didn't finish everything on the timeline that I had put in place for myself that I wanted to meet, but I'm now at a much better place. Um, and I've been able to give myself that time and space so that I can be performing at a better level now. Um, and so I guess like if things just feel overwhelming, um, it may not always be super convenient <laughs> or easy, but I, I guess it, um, one of the best things that you can do, I guess, is to just give yourself a little bit of grace. And if, if needed, push through and get it done. And if needed, take a step back and get back at it when you're feeling a little bit well, more well-rested and well-rounded. Yeah, I think that that's great. I think that um, it's totally, totally important to give yourself grace when you need to give yourself grace and to push through when you need to push through. Um, and finding that balance can be kind of difficult. And I'm glad that your mentor could help you with that. Um, and I think that that is you know, something that everybody kind of has to figure out for themselves because everybody does have like different mental capacities. Everybody has different things that they're able to do. But um, yeah, that's definitely really good advice. And I'm, I'm glad it worked out for you. <laughs> um, anybody else from the mom? All right, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna go through some of the um, childcare options that are on and off campus. So we're gonna start with on campus. Um, first of all, President Pines has implemented a couple new things for student parents, uh, a couple new resources. So one of them that I wanna highlight is the Care at Work benefit. Basically, it is a full membership to care.com. And if you don't know what care.com is, it's basically just a website where people are able to find um, high quality childcare at an affordable price. And even though it is pretty good pricing wise, the membership can get to be kind of expensive. It's about $37 per month, which can really add up. So what this Care at Work benefit is, is to provide graduate assistance, um, the option to have that membership paid for completely. And all that they have to worry about is the actual um, childcare that they end up finding. So there are many, many options on care.com for childcare and they range from many different prices. Um, so I think that providing this membership to people is gonna make a world of difference. And I'm really glad that President Pines has implemented this. They also provide um, 10 days of subsidized backup care and that kind of depends on, um, oh my goodness, it depends on, <laughs> um, your level of employment and how much money you make um, for the amount of subsidized backup care that you get, but the different options are linked on the pamphlet. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is the UMD Child Development Center. So it's basically a partnership between the uh, University of Maryland and Bright Horizons, which is another child care center um, to provide early education for infants through preschool while you guys are working and um, gives a little bit of an easier um, child care option because it's on campus. Um, it's open to children and dependents of UMD employees, students, and College Park residents. So as a College Park resident, even if you're not technically a UMD employee anymore, you're still eligible for this. And then the last one is the CYC, which is the most commonly known child care center on campus, I feel. Um, it is the Center for Young Children, and um, it is basically just, you know, the child care center that everybody wants. Um, it's the priority for space though is given to UMD affiliates such as active faculty, staff and students which would include all of you. Um, although tuition is kind of expensive, it is about $12,220 per year, which can be a little bit pricey, especially for you know students who are still figuring out their life. So um, 
they recommend to look into the Maryland Child Care Scholarship Program for different subsidies and different scholarships that make the tuition a little bit easier. And also just something that I want to note is that they're open to all children, including children with special needs. So anybody can apply to be part of this um, child care center. see we have a question is bright horizons located in college park i believe that there are many different locations for bright horizons it's kind of like kinder care um, where there are a bunch of different locations but there is definitely one that's near college park for sure okay so next i want to talk about um, a couple different oh and simone yep has done the link so yeah that's for that's for that <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay, so next we're gonna talk about some options for um, childcare near College Park. So there is obviously kinder care. Um, I feel like a lot of people have heard about kinder care. I definitely heard about it before I was researching it. So um, yeah, it is a um, childcare center for children ages infant through 12 years old. Um, they do provide distance learning right now for kindergarten through sixth grade, which I think is great. and. They recently added a bilingual Mandarin program. So if you're interested in your child learning a second language, that is an option here, which I thought was really interesting. And they also do have disability services. So there are many, many different locations. They're all listed on the pamphlet, but the closest one to us is the Calverton location. So that one is a 12 minute drive or 55 minutes using public transportation. Um, and just a little bit about kinder care. So they provide care and education for all of these children. They provide meals and snacks. And uh, for infants, uh, they have diapers and wipes that are included in the tuition. And um, your tuition is basically based on days of the week, age of the child, and which center is picked because some are more popular than others. The next one I wanna talk about is Child Way Early Learning Center. So again, that you have to call them for the rates because everything is different based on the amount of care and um, the age of the child. Um, so yeah, the phone number is listed on the pamphlet though. So this is basically comprehensive child care and daycare programs for infants through eighth grade that um, allow your child to think creatively, reason logically and apply knowledge um, usefully in their lives. One thing I really loved about this is that they're wheelchair accessible. So that is a really big perk for a lot of people. And they do offer virtual learning assistance for an extra $175 a week, which is kind of a lot. So, you know, it's, it's iffy, but I do like that they um, have that option for virtual learning right now. And they are a seven minute drive from campus or 35 minutes using public transportation. And then the last one I want to talk about is young family child care. So they give high quality child care and education to children from birth to three years old, and they have a play based curriculum. So basically, they focus more on the child's learning through their play with other people. Um, they obviously do have the standard education as well. But this aspect of it is very emphasized, which I honestly enjoy because I think that a lot of children learn through their own activities and their own um, experiences. So they give that option. So um, they allow children with disabilities, they allow children that have um, hearing and speaking impairments, um, they are wheelchair accessible, and they provide uh, care for those that speak Spanish and those that speak English, so they do have bilingual services. Um, and they also have uh, all the COVID precautions in place right now. So masks, socially distance, all of that stuff. And they're a 27 minute drive from campus or an hour and 10 minutes using public transportation. Okay, so next I wanna talk about the um, childcare centers that are specific for disabilities. So obviously all of the other childcare centers do offer disability services, but these um, childcare centers are going to be more centered around disabilities and and they're gonna find more children there that have disabilities than don't. So the first one is the Bright Eyes Early Learning Center. They provide flexible care options. They're COVID friendly. They do have virtual learning services. And I do love this one because they have reward programs for um, military and also sibling discounts. So for instance, if you bring in a sibling, so if there's two children, if they're twins or something like that, 
one of them will get a 5% discount for their, um, for their time at the child care center, which I think is great. And it is a 25 minute drive from campus or an hour and 10 minutes using public transportation. And the last one I wanna talk about is Easter Seals Child Development Center. So this one's not available to everybody. They serve um, families of national archives and record agencies, federal employees and community families. But what I really, really love about this one is that they offer therapy services and assessment as well as childcare. So if you're looking to have your child assessed for some sort of disability, you can do that at the child care center, which I love. They also have many scholarship programs available for all parents, and it is an 18 minute drive from campus or 47 minutes using public transportation. Are there any questions on like the different um, child care centers that are available? There's a lot more listed on the pamphlet, by the way. These are just the ones that I picked out. <laughs> if not, we'll move on. I just wanted to make sure. All right, so next I wanna talk a little bit about what's out there in terms of disability services, where you can get tested, uh, where you can find assessments. So there are three that are listed here and all three of them have um, something different that I really, really liked about them. So I'm just gonna take you through them real fast. Um, the first one is Applied Counseling and Psychoeducational Services. The reason I chose this one is because their full psychoeducational evaluation is $1,600. And I know that that seems like a lot, but compared to other places where you can get assessed, it's, it's one of the cheaper ones. So I really like this one because it provides that um, cheaper full evaluation where you're not gonna find that in a lot of other places. Unfortunately, they don't take insurance, but again, it's still better than most. And um, they do test for a lot of different things. They test for ADHD, early childhood and education. They test for disability and learning verification and so many more things. Um, and from campus, it's a 28 minute drive or an hour and 24 minutes using public transportation. The next one I love, oh, does somebody have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. I just didn't know if you had a question. <laughs> nope, I just hit it with my, I was moving locations. <laughs> no worries. We've all done that. I definitely do that in class all the time. So no worries. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one that I want to talk about is the Chesapeake ADHD Center of Maryland, which obviously specializes in ADHD. And they also do learning disorders and comorbid disorders as well, though. So they can test for more than one disorder interacting with each other. And the reason that I really, really love this one is because they do low income, um, they do low fee testing for low income families, which you don't see a lot in assessment services. So this is a really great um, service that they're providing. And even though they don't take insurance, again, they're, they do do low income, um, they do low fee testing for low income families. I don't know why that's not working in my brain, but it's okay. Um, and then they do also offer virtual assessment right now because of COVID, which I think is also really great. And from campus, it's only a 16 minute drive or 33 minutes using public transportation. So it is also one of the closer ones from campus. So a lot of positives about that middle one. <laughs> and then the last one I wanna hit on is uh, Paula Etzlaw. The reason I picked her is because she does a lot of different evaluations, but she also does ASD evaluations or autism spectrum disorder evaluations. And a lot of uh, places that do evaluations that have a lot of options do not include autism spectrum disorder. That's normally a different uh, place that you have to go to and it just focuses on autism spectrum disorder. But here she has that option included in a bunch of different things. So. Um, I really, I really think that that is a great um, aspect of it. But she also does testing for ADHD, educational learning, literacy, psychoeducational, psychological, social, and emotional evaluations. So comprehensive evaluation is $2,800 or her hourly rates are $400 to $2,800. But what I really love about this is that you can be reimbursed by your insurance depending on which insurance you have and if she takes your insurance. And she does do testing for children through young adults. So not like older adults, but children through young adults. From campus, it's a 24 minute drive or an hour and 33 minutes using public transportation. 
see. All right, next we're gonna talk about a couple of financial issues um, and how to deal with them. So there are many different subsidy options. I was unaware, honestly, of all of the different options that there are out there, but I found a ton of them and there's just three of them here. Well, technically four, but you'll see. So the first one I wanna talk about is the Child Care Scholarship Program. There's two of them. There's one through Maryland Public Schools and then another one sponsored by the state of Maryland. But for both of them, if you're under 13, your child cannot have disabilities to qualify for this, but children between 13 and 19 can have disabilities and still qualify for this scholarship. And what I do about this as well is that parents are not required to be US citizens to qualify for the scholarship, but their children are. So if your child was born here and they are a US citizen, but you're not, you can still qualify for this. The next one I wanna talk about is the Head Start program. This is technically also a childcare program, but it counts more as a subsidy program. So it is free childcare um, up to age five for low income families. And the way that they decide if your family qualifies or not is through the current poverty guidelines and they're all listed on the pamphlet. And they also do support children with disabilities. So if your children, if your child is up to age five and they do have disabilities, you can still qualify for this. And the last one I would talk about is the Prince George's Child Resource Center. So they provide early education and school readiness for little to no cost. Um, they do home visits, child development education, links to community services, and they also do adult education, which I thought was kind of interesting that they do all of them. And what I really, really love about this is that it's available to international students and international children. So you do not have to be a US citizen to qualify for this specific resource or this specific subsidy. And your child doesn't either. Oh yeah, thank you, Annie. I don't know if Sherry left, but. <laughs> Okay, and then lastly, I just want to go over some of the policies that we have at the University of Maryland to support student parents. Um, you might know about these already, you might not, but I'm still just, I want to go through them to make sure everybody has good understanding of all of them. So the first one I want to talk about is the current parental leave policy. This is probably the most known, most well-known policy as it's for maternity and paternity leave. Um, basically, each eligible parent gets up to six weeks of um, leave. Obviously, accommodations have to be made early so that they can be approved by the graduate school and your advisors. Um, and what I love about this is that graduate assistants get to keep their stipends and benefits during the six weeks. Um, and if you and your partner are both uh, graduate assistants, the, um, the time gets split up between the both of you. Okay, next I wanna talk about the difference between time away from duty and leave of absence because I feel like those get kind of mixed up a little bit. So time away from duty is basically 10 work days or 40 hours of collegiately supported absence. So for a 12 month assistantship, you get 10 work days or 40 hours of absence. And this is different than uh, absence due to illness too. Um, although if an absence due to illness lasts more than two weeks, you may have to take some of your time away from duty and use it for your illness. Um, and then a leave of absence is a longer amount of leave. I'm gonna get into that next. But um, some of the common reasons that a student parent especially may take a leave of absence include financial hardship, dependent care, medical and mental health concerns, and then obviously the childbearing and adoption. So what exactly is the leave of absence? So UMD allows up to two semesters or three 12 week terms of leave of absence. So these semesters, I do not believe have to be back to back. They can be taken um, one at a time. So if you wanna take one leave of absence or one semester of leave and then come back and then take another semester, that is fine. And the only thing is you have to have completed at least one semester prior to taking the leave of absence. So, and that semester has to be at UMD. So, um, if you get accepted into the school and then you decide that you need to take a leave of absence, you just need to delay your acceptance is basically what, what that is. 
Um, and then because multiple forms have to be filled out and they have to be approved by the student's faculty advisor, the graduate director, and the graduate dean, it's really important to get on all of those forms as soon as you possibly can. Um, they're supposed to be submitted um, before the beginning of the academic term for which it's requested. So sometimes it takes a while to get approved. So the earlier you start, the better. Okay, and then basically what is next? Um, Simone and I have been working on a little bit of a new syllabus section to put in some of the um, graduate school classes. Um, and it basically just goes through everything I went through today, how we have a bunch of different resources for graduate students that have children and how there are many different ways that they can get support through the graduate school and through UMD. Um, and then at the bottom is the link to the pamphlet. So hopefully that this will, if this does go into um, different syllabi, um, hopefully it will be linked in there as well. But we are gonna send an email out to all of you with a feedback survey and the link to the pamphlet. So don't worry about that. I think Simone maybe put it in the chat. Yep, there she did. <laughs> um, so yeah, and the forms needed for the six week leave are also on the pamphlet. So, yep, there you go. Oh, I love how I just saw everybody come on the pamphlet. That's awesome. <laughs> So if you guys have any questions about anything, this is Simone's contact info, um, the phone number and email address, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, if you want to just take a second, write this down. Or I'm sure well, that's, my old, that's my old number. For some reason, it still comes up some places, but that's my oh. number. I'll put my correct number in there. It's OK. Yeah, don't use this number then. I did it wrong. <laughs> email, the email works all the time, but um, no, because of, I used to work at the counseling center, so that number comes up some right now. What about leave of absence for F1 visa students? So that's a great question. Students who need to take a leave of absence due to medical care, it can be approved. What I've told people, if you have an F1 or J1 visa, and you want to take a leave of absence, let me know because we have a contact person at IS and they will talk with you about how to work that out so you can continue to stay in the country and there's no issues with your visa or taking a leave of absence. So a leave of absence is available for international students as well, but it's just a little bit more coordination with IS. If you have questions, you're welcome to email me. Um, if you email me, it's a little bit easier than calling. Um, and I promise if you email me, I will respond. I know it's COVID. I know some people don't respond. People are like, please pick up your phone. It's okay. If you email me, I will respond to you. I'm a live person. I'm here all day, every day. So, Yes, she will respond. She's not kidding. <laughs> um, okay. And then that's basically it. Um, do you guys, if you guys have any questions, this would be the time for that. And um, we're going to send an email with the feedback survey, but it's also right here. If you guys don't mind just filling that out, it's super quick, super easy. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. I hope you got something out of it. <laughs> thank you, everybody. We are gonna send a handout. The handout literally has the exact same information as the slides. So everything will be there with the hyperlinks. So if you're kind of like, well, can I get the slides? The handout will have that. If you have any questions or feedback, or if you say, hey, we missed this, then please let us know we're here. Thank you, big shout out to Emily. She did a great job. Round of applause and thank you so much everyone for coming out. We will email you with surveys in the handout um, tomorrow morning, I promise. It'll be a good Friday treat for you, but you will we'll receive it. And anyone who you know who registered, who just couldn't make it, they will also get the recording in the handout as well. Yes, thank you guys so much. You guys are great. And thank you for your participation also. I, I really, really appreciate it. I know it's hard on Zoom, but Everybody, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>